Hello, I'm Dr. Haig Sutrakian, bringing you a little POCUS review just in time for your next pediatric patient. Today we'll be talking about ultrasound-guided venous access in children with a focus on cannulation technique. In addition to your catheter and your ultrasound machine, you'll need to assemble some additional equipment. Tegaderm or other probe cover, skin prep solution, gloves, sterile gel, a tourniquet, gauze, sterile flushes, and a lure lock will be necessary. Once you have all of your equipment, you should turn your attention to proper positioning. Like any procedure, your success in placing ultrasound-guided IV catheters will rest on you and the patient both being comfortable. Once you've punctured the skin, your eyes should not leave the ultrasound screen. Looking down often results in disorientation to the ultrasound landmarks and your needle tip, which you should never lose track of. You should keep your body facing the ultrasound screen and generally lined up with the procedure. There are several ways of holding the ultrasound probe. We recommend that you hold the ultrasound probe so as to view veins in a transverse orientation, at least as you're learning. Avoid applying excessive pressure with your probe, which can inadvertently collapse your vein. You should hold the catheter in your dominant hand. On the left, you see an underhanded catheter grip and an overhanded grip on the right. As you thread the catheter, especially if you're approaching from a shallow angle, your fingers may be caught underneath. Keep this in mind as you establish your initial grip. With respect to your angle of approach, we recommend an initial angle of 30 to 45 degrees with respect to the skin. If the angle is too steep, you run a greater risk of penetrating the back wall of the vessel. The catheter will have to bend acutely to penetrate the vessel and may occlude. Additionally, needles are best visualized when they're parallel to the ultrasound probe. As the needle becomes more perpendicular to the probe, it becomes increasingly invisible. If the angle of the approach is too flat, however, too much of it may end up in the extravascular tissues and less of it in the vein, increasing risk of dislodgement. Furthermore, this approach tends to be more painful. With an appropriate angle of approach, the catheter enters more smoothly, doesn't kink, and is easy to visualize. A minimum of the catheter resides outside of the vein. We aren't recommending that you make complex calculations when you place an ultrasound-guided IV. It's useful to remember, however, that in general, the distance traveled by a catheter inserted at an angle of 45 degrees is always going to be longer than the measured depth. For example, a catheter targeting a vein one centimeter in depth will have to travel 1.4 centimeters. If the vein is two centimeters in depth, it will have to travel almost three centimeters. Here we see a depiction of an ultrasound-guided IV placement in cross-section. The operator's goal is to always keep track of the needle tip until it is seen in the center of the vein. Once the needle tip is identified just under the skin, the probe is advanced in small increments with the needle likewise following in small increments until it again can be seen on ultrasound. Once you see flash in the chamber of your catheter, don't stop. Unlike a landmark-guided approach, with ultrasound, you only advance the catheter off the needle once you visualize it in the center of the vein. You may need to decrease the angle of approach to create space for advancing the needle. Remember that the central element of the whole process is to never lose track of your needle tip. Here we see a view of the needle tip in the process we just described. Notice how the needle tip comes into view and as the probe is advanced, it disappears. It reappears as the operator advances it in small increments. When the needle tip is in the center of the vein, we have a view which is described as the target sign. 
So we're recommending that you start placing ultrasound guided IVs with your probe transverse to the vein and needle. You should also learn how to place them in a longitudinal orientation as depicted here. Notice how the angle of the needle is adjusted to a more shallow angle after the vessel wall is breached. When you're done, be sure to be a good neighbor and maintain the machines for the next patient and operator. We just reviewed a lot together that you'll have to integrate into your practice. Don't forget things you already do for other procedures. Employ child life specialists and ask for help in the form of holders. Make sure you and the patient are as relaxed as possible. Use the machine's gain and depth settings to optimize your views, and then be sure to pick the right catheter and the right sort of vein for cannulation. Keep your eyes on the screen. Don't apply too much pressure and accidentally occlude the vein. Remember that observing flash of blood in the catheter is not as central to the procedure when you're using ultrasound. You're striving to visualize the needle in the vein, and you can do it in both transverse and long axes. Remember that this skill will take some time for you to acquire. Be patient with yourself and focus on all of the people you'll help as you get better at doing this. I look forward to hearing of your success and our next opportunity to learn together. If you wish to read more into this topic, a list of references is provided here.